this school server implementation and we lose uh, fundamental uh, strengths that we have right now. Um, okay, the other thing, and before, um, the other thing <coughs> that I had skipped and is that this slide uh, mentions Moodle. And Moodle and a collection of other, Moodle is one, is perhaps the central tool of a collection of web-based tools that uh, that the school server is starting to provide. Moodle is in, this build, in the new build of the school server and is horribly in tune and, and, and uh, raw and a little bit in your face. And, um, and my plan is to cut it down, simplify it, and work with the education team to make it a better, ooh, make it a better educational tool. Um, and, but it's also <clears throat> a tool that we can rely on to provide a lot of things that are quite popular with, that, that are popular feature requests. People have been asking about a tool that provides uh, a narrative to, to say, I have this document, this activity, this document, this activity, this image, this sound, or this video, and I want to see it all structured in the sequences. Leaky? That, that came up, we well, just said jump in early conversations there. Sorry? Well, you just said we no, talked about it earlier. Yeah, we talked about it. Oh, sorry. No, well, sorry. Amadeus was mentioned. And we didn't get into too many. It kind of off on another tack, but it was. Uh, okay. You know, it was <clears throat> I'm I'm sure that there are, you know, there are possible solutions that are just laptop based, that, that are that are just sugar based, and I have no doubt about that, and that that's a strength. Um, but right now, we can deploy this now literally, and it's well implemented, it's well known, it's widely used, it's very popular with people that care about this kind of thing, and uh, so it's an effective solution that we have now. The second interesting aspect is that going forward, and uh, at some point next, I'm hoping that some point next year, we're going to have a at least passable implementation of an on offline functionality of Moodle. So, uh, the central parts of, of of the Moodle interface should be able to work when even when the laptop can't see the server, right? At least we have enough of the needed underpinnings to get to finish the job. Um, so when the laptop can't see the server, or the server can't see the when the laptop yeah, cannot see the server, if you prefetched content, the laptop, I mean, you you hook up to the to the to the school server, you look at it at, at at a course page, and you say, "Take this, take this content to to go offline." It'll make sure it has the local copy of all the interesting nice. documents, and then you go home, and you know oh. that you live too far away from the school signal, uh, and so, but you can still read, oh, right? Yeah. And the similar thing applies to several online-based content projects that we are talking to, um, ICDL and uh, and. Uh, I think it's Internet uh, Library Project by Krista Kale, and we're talking with them about off, off, about web-based clients that can go offline, that can that can cache things locally and go offline. I'm not sure. Maybe that ends up being getting the content dynamically packaged as an activity, as an evil kind of activity, and maybe that's a better solution. But we can do a lot of that, put a lot of that glue in place on the server side. Say have all the files on the server side and package them as a, as a content bundle dynamically. Right? Uh, yeah. I've been sorry, for a more time briefly on that. Um, Nigel Ponty was on uh, Charlie Bowles last night, and uh, he gave the example. Uh, is this on video? Maybe I shouldn't say this. <laughs> he gave the example of a uh, uh, school of a thousand kids. Yeah. And you can put a hundred books on a laptop. Therefore, you can have a hundred thousand books in a school. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Sounds you know, good. make that happen. We can make that happen soon. Yeah. Sounds good. Well, the, yeah. The, 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 the logistics of who gets. The really interesting thing is that Rooster has now digitized uh, literally a million books. Okay. And we've been playing with a moderately primitive but handsome book reader for looking at these images. There's both the short term and the long term thing to do, one of which is just be able to package these things up the way we do wiki browse run with it, and that can be done something in the next month or two. In the longer run, um, it turns out that the 
years an offline web people are doing more elegant things that it might be just so you can visit the website, you click on it and say, I want to download this thing, this book, and the right thing might happen. That will require more intelligence because it probably ought to, or you will need to be able to interact with things like how much space do we have left, things like that. Um, uh, so um, uh, the Internet Archive stuff is really quite fun. If people want to play with it, I've got a URL to the beta test of the book reader. Um, I want it. And there's pretty stuff. You send it to me out recently. Well, I don't want to send it out to the sugar list because I have to go to Africa and Brewster to do that. I don't know if it's planned. Oh, it's it's kind of thing to do. He sent that text to Brewster. You can send it to the server that doesn't list. There's only four people in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have it. <laughs> and it'll be archived, right? Uh, <laughs> that, that can be fixed. Uh, yeah, yeah. I just Look, need, it won't get out of the Let me send mail to Brewster and, and his programmer asking you, is, is that data now public or not? <laughs> if he says that's the right thing to do. Okay. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very interested in, in that track because uh, one of the things we are seeing is that almost every content project has their own repository and their own player, which is something we discussed uh, yesterday, I think. And, uh, and as soon as I have a strong concept, content repository and a strong data, I can start telling people. I'm sorry? And you'll be one among many. <laughs> yes, but if I, if I'll be one, the, one among many, but I can pick, I want to pick a really good one. One million number, and the relation, next to Google, the Internet Archive yeah. has relationships with, with more interesting yeah. libraries than anybody <clears> else. Like the Boston Public Library, which is one of the larger libraries in the United States, and lots of libraries yeah. elsewhere. The more leverage we have, the better. But I still can't handle, at least on the school server, one software stack per supplier of content. Well, I, mean, I, I want to bring everybody to one place. In Brewster's case, it's just a JavaScript app. It's not something that's separate. Yeah. So it's. But if I want to be able to provide it through the school server in disconnected schools, I do need a stack. He's already been worrying about that. But there's okay. We can pick that offline about yep. it. Yep, definitely. Okay, so back to the things I want to do more, that I'm wanting to do moving forward with Sugar Labs um, and, and the Sugar Stack. <coughs> One is tweaking, working with Browse with the browse activity to make sure that we can <coughs> tell the school server in a safe and sane manner about the identity of this laptop, right? Uh, <coughs> so that we have basically transparent authentication. All the educational tools we want to use on the school server, they kind of want to know who the user is. And at the same time, we don't want to be burdening six-year-olds with, ah, so here's your username and password. Right? Sorry? How do, I, how do I want to do it? What do you, what do you need in Bruce for you? Okay, uh, one way to do it, one way to do it would be to say, right now, one requirement for the server to start knowing about this this uh, user account is that they have to register. And when they register, they register giving the school server a public key, a public SSH key. Yeah? So <clears throat> can we maybe register with also a private public, with, with the public bit of, a, of, a, of an SSL key? So that then we can use client certificates, for example? And uh, and basically have the conversation with the school server over HTTPS. Right? Still, the school server is bound to have a self-signed certificate at that point, so we need enough glue to not scare, to, to special case the school server and not go, you know, not go jumping big scary messages, oh, that key is invalid, who's snake oil company? Uh, Self-signing certificate. Can we just install a root certificate? We could. But that but makes, puts us in the business of generating certificates for every school server. A lot of infrastructure stuff sure on the laptops for each country. 
on each school server, which is going to have a, a different 